Hi and welcome to my tutorial. This is Nikki from the Pigeon Letters design team. Today we're going to be painting a beautiful snowy landscape with the sun rising in the background. I recently visited the Sierras and it was so beautiful that I thought this would be the perfect tutorial for us. You're going to need a few supplies. We are going to be using watercolor paint, so make sure you have a paint palette or um, at least maybe a plate with a couple different colors of paint on it. We are going to be using several sizes of brushes. I have an eight here, a four, a two, and then a really fine line one. Um, you don't need all of these sizes, but I recommend having at least a size six and something small for details. I'm going to be using tape today because I want to make a perfect little rectangle here. If you're already working on a watercolor block, don't worry about the tape unless you want to use it. But if you are not working on a watercolor block and you just have a single piece of watercolor paper, make sure to tape it down to your working surface. Otherwise your paper is going to buckle because we're going to be using a lot of water. And then of course, two water cups. I always like to use one for cool tones and one for warm tones. Now we're going to get started and the first thing that we need to do is I'm going to tape out my tape out my paper. The size I'm going to be painting today, I want to say like five by seven, but feel free to choose any size you want. Of course, the bigger the size, the longer it's going to take you to do this. <laughs> That's something I've been learning lately. And if you are just and you don't have to, to do this unless you want to, but I wanted to make it a perfect little rectangle. But if you are painting with just a single piece of paper, not on a block, you do need to tape it down. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. And I'm gonna grab a pencil and I wanna just lightly sketch out the artwork here. Sorry, I realized that this is crooked. I'm going to come down about three quarters of the way and just make a line here. This is gonna be our horizon line. Something to note when you're sketching is, really if you're doing a landscape, you never want your horizon line to be right in the middle. And you, the reason is, is because it really helps to draw your eye in when the rule of thirds. So um, I could make this a little bit lower, but I'm gonna keep it right here. You just don't wanna do it exactly in half. We're gonna have two mountains coming up back here. So I'm just drawing these little mountain peaks. We're not gonna to put too much detail into these mountains because technically they're far away, but we want them to look snowy. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna draw this line down the center, kind of jaggedy. Oop, it sounds like they're landscaping outside. <laughs> I hope you guys can't hear that. Um, make this kind of jagged. And this will just show us where the shadow goes and the snow goes. Now over here, I wanted to do just a little house off in the distance. Um, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to draw a rectangle. So a little rectangle. And then I'm going to have this triangle kind of off center and then make it going up a little bit. So basically I'm just making like this little box house. And there's going to be snow on the roof, so I'm drawing a little bit darker so you guys can see, but make sure you're not drawing too, too dark. And then maybe I want to put a little house back here as well. Um, the same kind of shape, but maybe um, I'm just going to make it from the side view so you don't actually see this front part. And then I'll do just two little windows. Maybe I'll put a chimney on there make it a little more interesting. Okay, I have that. And then I'm going to have some rough trees. Just make kind of like circular cloud looking things. We're gonna fill these in um, just really lightly kind of dotting our paint so they don't need to be super detailed. <clears throat> Maybe put another one up here and just make the trunk and then just a little like slope coming down. And then over here, maybe we have, so we're gonna have really loose pine trees. Just make really, really light lines coming down. There's not gonna be a ton of detail in these trees because they're gonna be further away. 
And again, just making this little slope. And then lastly, another little slope. And we're gonna have just dead, not dead trees, but trees that have lost all their leaves because that's what happens in winter. And they're basically just these little branches coming up. All right, so we have our overall scene here and we are going to get started. Um, I'm actually gonna erase a little bit of my lines because they're pretty um, dark. But we are going to get started and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our beautiful um, like sun rising. So we're not actually gonna show the sun. We are going to just show the colors and the variation. So we're doing a wash. And in order to do that, let's mix up our colors first. When the sun rises, there's yellow, pink, but I want there to just be a touch of darkness in the sky still. I'm mixing up my color. I'm doing kind of a pink. Definitely need that. And I'm going to add just a little yellow to that. My palette is kind of messy. <laughs> it's always messy. A little Scarlet Lake. Okay. Because you don't want it to be totally hot pink, but you also don't want it to be too orange. Then I'm going to mix up yellow. This is Indian yellow that I have over here. It's more of a golden tone. Maybe add just a touch of this yellow in there. And lastly, we need a blue. And to be honest, I cannot tell you what blues I have here. I'm pretty sure this is cobalt, but just use a blue that is doesn't have like a lot of gray in it. Like you don't want to be using Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is so interesting because sometimes the brands that make it make it more blue, sometimes they make it more gray. You have to make that determination for yourself. All right, so we have our blue. And what we're gonna do is just grab some water and just, I'm adding water all the way down to these mountains. We're just wetting our paper because we want our paint to really flow. This technique is called wet on wet. If you're not familiar with it, make sure you're outlining the mountains. If you get the mountains wet at all, the paint will bleed into there. So make sure that you're really make, getting that line. Sorry about that. My dog started barking <laughs> at the worst time. So make sure you're just adding water to this. You want this to stay wet. You don't want it to start drying. Okay, now that all of that is wet, we're gonna grab our first tone and I'm gonna start down here with that yellow because if the sun was rising, it would be yellow down here. I'm just lightly poking that in and you can see how it just starts to spread because it's wet. I just love that about watercolor. Then I want to take some of my pink and it is looking more red. So actually I'm going to grab a little more pink and just lightly add that in there. And don't worry too much if it looks perfect right now because when it dries, it has a mind of its own. Now I'm grabbing my blue and I'm going to the very top and I am just going to, sometimes you gotta help it out a little bit. Now, if you have big puddles of water on this, make sure that you soak them up because you're gonna get an unfavorable looking wash if there's big puddles. Then I'm just gonna lightly help this bleed into that pink but be careful because this is blue and if it starts going in too much to the yellow, you're gonna get green and it's gonna start to look murky. And I actually wanna poke in just a little deeper blue. Try to grab some deeper blue because I want to add little stars up here when we're all done with white gouache. I think that will be a nice touch. I'm grabbing some indigo. And you can play with it as long as it's wet, but as soon as it starts to dry, 
you're gonna start pulling up color. So you wanna be really careful about that. You can just grab water too if you feel like you need to move it around a little bit more. Okay. And I might just add a little more yellow just to brighten it up a little bit. Maybe the sun is coming in right here in the middle of this mountain. Okay, lovely. Now that we have that done, I wanna come in here and I want the snow to reflect the sky. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab water and we wanna save some of the white of this paper because we want it to look really white and snowy. But I'm going to just take water in some areas and then I'm gonna take maybe that pink and let it flow into that. And then maybe have it come out here a little bit. We're gonna come in and make all the shadows in the snow, so don't, don't be worried. But I'm just adding some of that pink and then maybe dropping in a little bit of that yellow as well. Same thing over here. I'm not gonna do the blue because we're gonna come in here with a kind of grayish, purplish blue and get some shadows in. But the pink and the yellow, I think looks really cool. And if you feel that your lines are harsh, just grab some water and lightly move them around. Okay. I think I'm loving that for the most part. There's no rhyme or reason here. You can literally put that color wherever you want. Just make sure you're not covering everything. Now we need the sky to dry before we can touch these mountains, but we can definitely get started working on here. I wanna make this little house, I'm gonna grab my size two brush. I wanna make it a light brown. Mix up a light brown. I'm using sienna brown here with a little bit of yellow ochre. And it's just a little too bright. I'm gonna mute it down with a little green. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna outline it. Now, don't touch the roof because <clears throat> we want the roof to be white. And then I'm just grabbing water and moving it around. And we can add more detail in a second. So just get this base layer down. And something cool I like to do to make it look as if the windows are glowing is while this is still wet, grabbing yellow paint and just dabbing it in there. And it's going to bleed, but don't worry about it because it gives the illusion that the windows are glowing. We have to paint that chimney if you made one. Just add in a little brown paint up here. And then I'm gonna make this one the same color over here maybe a little lighter because it's further away. And just to add some more detail, I'm going to darken that brown a bit. So we're working in a wet on wet style. Make sure your brush is pretty small and I'm just going along the edge of that rooftop to show shadow. Rinse off your brush and kind of move it around, almost as if you're kind of like brushing your teeth, that circular motion. Whenever I do this technique, it feels really out of control to me because I'm used to working in such a layered style, but it really turns out good, like it looks fine, so don't worry about that. I'm doing the same thing back here to this little house, but making sure it's lighter because it's further away. 
Okay, so we can leave those alone for right now. And I wanna make these trees over here. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab a really dark, almost grayish green. And I'm going to make little lines coming down. And I'm gonna grab water. I'm just kind of gonna blend them around. Blend that color around and then we'll come in and make finer details later. But these trees are supposed to be further away. So we are not overly concerned about the details in them. I'm grabbing that liner brush that's really small and I'm going back and getting that green again. And up at the top, I'm just making these lines coming out. Kind of like a messy, almost like just back and forth scratching <laughs> because they don't need a ton of detail, but we do want to see that they're trees. So just these really minor lines up here. And then you can even come down and add some of that. Since this is wet, it's going to bleed, but you're going to get some of that texture, unless it's super, super wet. If it's that wet, just give it a second to dry. You don't want it to dry completely though because we want it to have that blurred look. And we can come back later when it is completely dry and add a little more details if we feel like it needs it. But as you can see, these trees look like they're off in the distance and I'm pretty happy with them. You can add a little more dark color too if you'd like. Just poke it in here and there. This brush is really small. Doesn't hold a lot of paint. But it does give me that texture that I was looking for. Okay, fantastic. We can, let's see, we can't touch this yet because that is still wet, but we could um, draw in some of these shadows for the snow. I like to mix up something that's a bluish, purplish gray. I'm grabbing some indigo, a little bit of black, and a little bit of red. And one tip for you guys when you're painting with watercolor, I like to keep a little piece of paper off to the side that where I can test out my colors before I put them on my paper. Um, I can do that up here since um, the artwork is just right here. But just test out your colors before you put them on your paper because once they're on there, it's hard to take them off. Okay, I'm happy with that and I'm gonna water it down. And I'm just making a line and then I'm grabbing just water and basically smoothing it out. So it's this shadowy look, but it's making my the white parts of the paper look even more white. So you're gonna go ahead and do this in a couple different spots. I'm gonna grab a thinner brush because that one's just a little too big. And then just blending. You want it to have a soft look. You don't want it to look too harsh. And play with different levels of saturation. So some of these lines might be more dark and some of them might be a lot lighter. and you can always have the line come back to you. Another thing you can do is what I like to call dry brushing and grab a brush that's dry and you can kind of get a little more texture with that. Because when there's a lot of water, it's just gonna be, it's gonna blend a lot. I'm gonna make a little dark area up here. And then just these ones out here are gonna be really light because it's further away. And then maybe have something a lot darker coming over here. Like there's a big shadow over here. It's funny, um, I used to be so afraid to do stuff like this, like make a dark shadow because I thought, oh, I'm gonna ruin my whole painting but it really adds depth um, 
to use those darker shadows. And I say just experiment, don't be afraid because they really can make a big difference. I'm like, well, it's supposed to be white, so it shouldn't have all this dark color. But if you look at anything, like in real life, you'll notice that there's a lot of dark shadows. That's how we see that there's lighter things is because of those shadows. All right, that looks pretty good. We can always come in and add more shadows later if we want to. But I'm digging that. I think it looks good. Now for these little trees over here, we are going to mix up some green because it's winter, green isn't gonna be super, I mean, for the most part, isn't gonna be super bright green, at least where I live and where I was traveling, the Sierras, everything kind of has a brown um, tint to it. So I have green here and I'm adding in some yellow ochre and a little bit of brown. And I am going to, I have a size two brush, I'm just like, um, like pressing down. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pressing down and lifting my brush, almost making dots for these trees. So I, I'm not doing a ton of detail just because we're looking at a far away scene. And I'm going to alternate and put in some more dark color. And I'm because it's wet, it's gonna bleed. And I'm leaving some little spots in between. These trees are just me like dabbing my brush. I don't have a ton of water on my brush. So the, the uh, consistency of my paint is, I wanna say like butter, like melted butter. because if it's too watery, I'm not going to be able to get this texture that I want. I want this tree to look like it's further behind, so there's like a little shadow, so I'm making it just a little darker, the paint. And I'm gonna put some of those darker shadows in here. And something else you can do is rinse off your brush, dry it off, and then can kind of just play with this paint a little bit, like make it come out a little bit more with this dry brush. It's giving it some texture. Those look good and they need a tree trunk. Grab a brown color, something a little muted. And add some blue to that. My paint palette is such a mess. <laughs> And for the tree trunks, they're just a little line here. Maybe leave a little um, white in between. Makes them more interesting. And maybe you make a tree trunk where you can't really see the tree, but you just assume that it's there. And if you want, you can grab just water and kind of blend it as well. So you get a little bit of that brown shadow of the, of the root. And if you want to add another little layer, you can grab a really dark brown and just do a little edge to the bottom here. Not too much detail because they're further away, but some detail is okay. Now for these dead trees, or not dead, <laughs> trees that lost all their leaves over here, grab a brown and this is just line work. So just a tree with just its branches, no leaves. There's really no rules here. I mean, no like hard and fast rules. Maybe alternate your colors a little bit. So some of them are darker brown, some of them are lighter brown. It'll be more interesting to look at. And our scene is coming together pretty well. This is almost dry. So we should be able to do those mountains soon. I'm gonna do the same thing with just water and lightly blend the bottom of these trees. Maybe these ones really don't have, put some extra ones back here. 
So the ones that are further away are gonna be lighter in color. Those look good. And I'm gonna put some, that going back to that same blue that we use for our shadows, I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow on top of the house. So it looks like snow kind of fell and there's some shadows that it's creating, but still leaving some white. Maybe over by the chimney, there's a little deeper shadow. I'm gonna add a little more detail. So go back and grab something that's kind of a faded green and just put in some tiny lines, not too many. I'm kind of just making like a squiggly movement with these. It doesn't have to be anything huge. And use water if you feel that you've put too many details in there. But I did just want to make sure that we know that these are trees. Maybe just some lines too. Perfect. The essence of a tree. <laughs> Now we can get into our mountains and what we wanna do is we want this part to be a shadow and this part to be white. We're going to grab this similar blue down here that we created, that bluish purple, and we are going to just paint along that edge, that jaggedy edge. You want it to be a little jagged because it's snow and it fell on the mountain, but keep that shadow light, it doesn't have to be super dark. And then just bring it all the way down. And with that same color, just make some little lines over here. And you can make them darker and light. This is to show that there's some texture in the mountain. Same thing over here. all the way to the bottom. And you can even have it come across a little bit. My paper is a little bit wet, so there is a little bit of bleeding. It's okay. And then just same thing, some texture in the mountain. Maybe some of those are a little bit lighter. I need to make some of these darker because look too perfect. Perfect. Okay. And something I actually do like to do just a slightly darker edge. Since this is still wet, you can come in here and just add a little more um, darkness and we'll blend it. This one's blending pretty easy because it's pretty wet still. Um, just like that with water. Awesome. Maybe make this a little darker down here. Okay, so now that we have this done, for the most part, the landscape is done, but I wanna add in a couple more details. I am actually gonna grab that indigo color and make some of these shadows a little bit darker. Don't be afraid to make them dark. Some over here. I'm just, I have my smallest brush. I'm just adding in some of these darker lines. 
and I'm letting them be pretty pronounced. I'm not softening them up because I want to get more, uh, like a bigger impact. Maybe there's a shadow here. Something else that you could do is you could grab yellow and it could be like the windows are reflecting onto the snow. I'm not going to do too much of those dark lines out here because that's in the fort that's far away and we want it to to um, like kind of fade away. But since these are closer, we can add that. Maybe we want to add another little hill here of snow and a shadow. With watercolor, I mean, with any art form, you can just keep going and going and going, but there's always that point of no return. And you know, you have to mess up to figure out what that is for you. So, you know, don't be afraid of it. It is something you have to learn, but sometimes less is definitely more. And I'm going to put just a tiny shadow over here. So you can see that the roof is kind of filled with snow. And our chimney is looking kind of sad. So I'm going to grab just a little bit of that dark brown and put a dart on the opposite side like there would be a shadow. And then around these little windows, they're still pretty wet. But I'm going to grab a grayish color and just kind of outline them. This brush is really small. This is a great details brush from the Pigeon Letters. It's 20 over 10 if you guys need a details brush. This one is great. Okay. All right, so for the most part, this is done. But the last thing I wanna do is I wanna add just some little stars in the sky. So it looks like, you know, the sun is just rising and you can still see, what is it? The North Star that is the brightest or Venus. <laughs> and the way I'm gonna do that is I just have this bleed proof white. If you have white gouache or even a gel pen, that'll work. Just putting little tiny stars and maybe one that's extra bright like that, like a Disney fairy tale star. <laughs> and um, you can put some of them into the pink, but they're going to start, you're not gonna see them that well because it's so much lighter, but that kind of looks cool because you can tell that the sun's coming up. Just little dots. Beautiful. Oh, I would just love to be here. It looks so magical. All right, and that is our snowy landscape. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I love to see what you create. If you're on Instagram, please tag me at Lavender and C. I, like I said, I love seeing what you create. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have an amazing day.